the Indian thing. All right, so um, tonight, because I know you're tired of hearing me talk over and over again, okay? Uh, I told you we'd have guest speakers come in, and so tonight uh, we are privileged to have a good friend of mine, Mr. Michael Jeffries. Uh, we go to church together. Michael, we go in uh, to church together for a while. Okay, so. Uh, Yes, it's like Michael and Jeffrey together. It's a mixture. Okay, it's a hybrid. All right. Good luck. Okay. Yes, he's funny and he plays basketball. That might be applicable. Okay. So, um, he is from Lansing, Michigan, which is ironic. Those of you who are talking, we were talking about Lansing just like three days ago. All right. We, um, some guys here. I'll tell you later. Uh, you might not want to know. Uh, anyway, he's from Lansing, Michigan, and uh, he's been in Taiwan four years. Uh, and he studied business at He works at a business firm, what's the place called? Uh, what's it called again? Yes, Global PR up in Beto, close to some of our students, okay? So, please give him the warm GCA welcome, give him your attention, listen up, and pay attention to what he has to say today. Thank you.
so many, so much complexity in this world, and God created all of that. I mean, and He did it in like six days. Uh, he created us. He created everything. He created the things we don't even see. How many things that were going on in that world we didn't even see in like a minute? The, it's a, a minute and twelve, or a, a minute and twelve seconds. So much we saw there. God created. We're suspended above the ground for four stories, right? And man create, found out how to do that. But God created everything before that. He created the gravity that makes us have to do that. There's so much to this world that God created. It's it's big and huge and crazy. And that's only this earth. Can we cue the next movie? I mean, this movie really blows my mind.
I thought that was really cool because it shows like how diverse this earth is and he just takes his video camera with his tiny little, you know, rigs it with his world right there and then shows footage all over the world. I mean, like all those cities look different. All the people live differently, do different things. I mean, my name is Michael Jeffries. I like basketball. I'm from Michigan. If any of you like American football, it's a really good year to be from Michigan because the Detroit Lions are killing it. <laughs> but, but you guys don't like that, right? You guys like probably one of those horrible teams, like, I don't know, New England Patriots or something like that. Yeah, we're all different. I mean, this is, it's crazy. It's crazy how, how that movie shows the difference between Paris and, and, uh, and San Francisco, right? And that's still the developed world. When he went to, like, India and some of those other places, Egypt, he showed in there, like, way different the way people live and what they do and who their families were and how they approach life and what they think about, right? It's, it's amazing how many of us there are and how different we all are from each other. Uh, go, to the, go to the next slide. Okay, you, get, you can't click on that. You have to go down here and then show this. Okay, so this is a really cool picture for me because it, it helps me realize how small I am how I stack up with all the other people in the world. So this pixel right here is one person. And all the other pixels in this area, this is the rest of the people in the world. So just start scrolling over here. Just start scrolling. Just keep, you're going to have to press down. It goes for a while. There's one million. One million. Two million. Three million. You better speed it up. This is taking way too long. I can't see that. Okay, here we go. Million, 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 million. Still going, still going, still million, 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 million. I mean, we're and we're speeding it up. This is how long it takes sped up. Too many people. Wow. It's more than that now. This was back in 2006, right? We're one pixel. That's how many people there are in this world. That's it's crazy. And we're all different. We're all unique. This God made all of us. He made all that we see, all we don't see. And what's crazy about it, can you flip again? He told Jeremiah in the Old Testament, and he's saying this to us as well. Before I shaped you in your mother's womb, before you even breathed your first breath, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. That's what God says to me and you, to every one of those 6.5 million, billion, sorry, 6.5 billion people. He says, not only did I create you, not only did I create the world, but I know you. I knew you before you breathed your first breath. I have a plan for your life. That's crazy. He's that big. He created the whole universe, and he still knows me. There's, there's a band I like here in Taiwan called Matska. I don't know if any of you ever heard of it. They play reggae music, mostly some other stuff now. Uh, and I think they're really cool. If Matska were to call me up and say, hey, Mike, I've never met them, so this would never happen. But they don't know I exist. <laughs> but if, if they were to call me up and say, hey, Mike, we want to hang out with you. Would you come over and hang out with us? Uh, maybe, you know, go to get a burger or maybe get some fried dumplings or something like that. I would say, yeah, I would hang out with you. That sounds awesome. I love you guys. I want to know who you are and spend time with you and get to know, like, well, how can you write such cool music? God... The maker of the universe, the, the guy who is so big, I, we, don't, we can't even give a picture of him because he's so big. He's calling me up and saying, I want to spend time with you. I want to get to know you. I want you to get to know me. I, I, I mean, I made you who you are. Before you breathed your first breath, I had holy plans for you. Why don't we hang out? That's that doesn't make any sense. I should be the one saying, God, please pay attention to me. I mean, just don't kill me or something. You're so big and powerful and amazing. But he's coming to me. Can you click it again? 
I mean, look, think about this. This is really cool, right? This is how small we all were. So this is like a, a mock-up of a baby at, at seven weeks after conception, before birth, and then at 12 weeks. So this is what we all looked like when we were like four months old in our mother's wombs. That's how small we are. We were. We can be. We are tiny. And God too. Can you click it again? So there's us. And here's God. We can't even we can't even picture it. There's no picture that we can put on God because he's so big and powerful. I mean, think back to those movies, right? The earth. We every day we're discovering new species, right? Every day new species our old species are dying off. This world is constantly changing and shifting and um, becoming older. And, and all you science people can tell me a lot about how that works. I don't really know that much about it. But it's, it's so big and complex. And then the universe is even bigger and more complex. And there's 6.5 billion of us to keep straight. And God, who we can't even picture because he's so big, says to us, I want to hang out with you. Can you, can you put it in there? God says to us, God says to me and to you, to each one of us, look at me. I stand at the door. I knock. If you hear me call and open the door, I'll come in and sit down to supper with you. This is kind of, I like to use this version of the Bible sometimes because it makes me think about things in a new way. It's called the message. So you'll notice it's a little different from other Bibles that you might have read. Um, but, I mean, this is, this is what God says to us. He says, if you hear me, I don't want to come into your house. I'm standing at your door. Let, you know, let's spend time together. He's so much more important than Matska. I mean, I, that sounds so trite even to say, I would love to hang out with Matska. I would love to hang out with God. That's a horrible comparison. They don't even measure up, right? But, I mean, that's basically what we're at here, is God, the maker of the universe, says, listen, I'm outside your door. Let's hang out. Let's spend time together. Let me tell you who I am. Let me tell you who you should be. Ah, that's amazing. That's am How many of you have ever, like, had a friend where you like that friend more than the friend likes you kind of thing? Does that sound familiar to anybody? Okay. A lot of guys who have liked girls that don't like them, maybe this is familiar to you. You're like me. You're in high school. And by the way, I, this year is my 10th year out of high school. That's crazy because it feels like I was just in high school. I was just in high school. I was in orchestra. Yes, I was an orchestra geek. There was a girl named Lauren. She was hot. She was smart. She was cool. I wanted to spend time with her, but she had a boyfriend, and I was really shy. And I, I mean, I wasn't like shy like I didn't know how to talk to people. I was shy like I would never say, hey, Lauren, you're hot. We should hang out. <laughs> I like you. Do you like me? <laughs> I've never had a girlfriend until way after high school, actually. But for two years, I was, I thought this girl was so cool and hot and amazing. And I could never, like, muster up the courage to hang out with her. And there was other friends I had, you know, when I was younger. Um, and still do that. I like them more than they like me, right? And, like, when I was a kid, I want to hang out with a buddy of mine that I, I, I really like him a lot. So I call him up and say, hey, can we hang out? And he like well, pretends that he's sick or pretends that he's busy or something like that because he doesn't really like me. He's not really interested in hanging out with me. I like him. He's not so interested in me. That's kind of the way it should be with God, right? We're insignificant. We're so small. We're one of 6.5 billion people. In a, in a massive universe, and the God who created it all is bigger and more complex than all of it, wants to, wants to know us, does know us, and wants us to know Him. He wants us to reciprocate that relationship. He wants us to want to spend time with Him as much as He wants to spend time with us. He loves us so much. 
He's standing at our door, and he's knocking. And he says, if you hear me knock, open the door. Let's, let's, let's get to know each other. Can you turn it again? What are we supposed to do? God is at our door. It's hard to, to always move forward in these kind of religion type questions because, I mean, when I'm hungry, I can go get something to eat. That's pretty straightforward. But what do I do when I hear God speaking to me, when I want to move forward? Well, one thing that Jesus said to do, he said, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find, knock and it will be open to you. What you have to do is ask. You have to seek. You have to want God. You have to say, I hear you knocking at my door, God, and I want to spend time with you. I love you. I can't believe you want to spend time with me, but I'm, I'm pumped that you do. Let's, let's talk. And all of you guys go to a Christian school, right? So you know what prayer is. Prayer is talking to God. The guy, the being, that we can't even picture because he's so big and so complex. He created something so amazing with this world and universe and us and knows it all inside and out and cares about us so much. We're so special to him. It says in Genesis, why did he create people? He created us because he wanted someone to spend time with, someone to get to know, someone to hang out with. That's crazy. And all the rest of this is for us, right? Yeah, I know, a lot of things are crazy with me. I know, give me a break. <laughs> okay, can you click one more time? Who, who are we going to talk to? Who are we supposed to see? Who are we supposed to open the door for? Jesus! Okay, that's kind of obvious. But it's true. It is so obvious, but it's so true. Jesus is the human that God became. God came to earth. Remember that slide with the babies? God squeezed himself that small into a mother, came out just like all of us with blood and sweat, all kinds of stuff. And then, and then, he was a kid. He went to school. He got educated. He became a carpenter. He grew up and he died for the world. That's crazy. <laughs> People knew him and talked to him and spent time with him. Like me and you are spending time together. This would be, you know, you're Jesus, I'm some schmo. We're hanging out like this. That's amazing. I yeah, did. used a different word from crazy. That's Jesus. He's the one we're supposed to be seeking. He's the one we're supposed to be asking. He's the one we're supposed to be opening our door to. That's oh man. I almost said crazy again. Can you think one more time about it? Jesus said it. Jesus said it. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. I've been going on and on and on and on tonight to you guys. Telling you stuff you probably have heard before. For a lot of you, it makes absolute sense. You know what I'm talking about when I say, God is crazy amazing and he still wants to spend time with me. How is that even possible? I don't understand that. I love it. I want to open my door and spend time with him. You understand how amazing that is, how crazy that is. You know Jesus. It's pretty awesome, right? And some of you have heard this before, and you're like, get on with it already. I've heard this before. I don't want to open my door to Jesus. That's not, that's not me. He's not God. This world is complicated. We can't understand it. Yeah, it's all crazy. I don't understand. I don't want to understand. I don't want Jesus. 
And then there's some of you who don't get what I'm saying when I say God is amazing, He's so big. And He's awesome to spend time with. He's awesome to know. You don't understand that, but you want that. You want to understand what is important in life so that 20 years from now, you have all the money in the world and you're unhappy because you didn't understand, you don't understand what's important in life. You don't know Jesus. But you want to know. You want to know what I'm saying when I say spending time with God is amazing. Being with Jesus is amazing. You can know. You can know tonight. You can know now. You can know for the rest of your life. You'll never stop knowing. <coughs> Jesus, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. You can know tonight. And you won't, you won't know everything tonight. You won't know everything before you go to heaven. I mean, that's just the way the world works. God made us with brains that fit inside of our head. And our brains just aren't big enough to get it all. If you want to know tonight, if you want to understand, if you don't understand what I'm saying, when I say God is crazy big, amazing, wonderful, awesome, and He spends time with me, we spend time together, but you want to know, there's a ton of people here that want to help you get there. I'd love to help you get there. I'd love to introduce you to my Jesus. He's my friend. He's my God. If you want to know, then talk to me after after we stop talking, you know, as a group, or talk to one of these other people. Because you can know. You can live a life that's way better than Farmville and way better than all this other stuff that's, you know, fun, but it doesn't it doesn't come near what living a life that matters is about. So can you click it one back? That's just what I want to leave you with. I mean, I don't know much. You've heard all this before. I'm sure of it. All I can say is if you want to know more, there are people here who love you, who want to show you how Jesus loves you. So thanks for listening. That's it.